rent, car insurance, and student loans are words we don't like to hear. It feels like some kind of bill is always due, but with money management skills and some cash from a side hustle, financial independence is definitely possible. So today is all about what I wish you knew about balling on a budget. What's up everyone, I'm Mia Victory and welcome to I Wish You Knew. You know we love to treat ourselves on payday. Clothes, food, concerts, you name it. But sometimes our financial responsibilities take all of our coins. How can we take care of business and still enjoy our favorite things? Our panel today can help with that. They are... Byron Lewis. And Brittany Timmons. Financial independence starts with making a decent living. Mayor Muriel Bowser took action to make sure people working in D.C. earn fair wages. Take a look. We are here today to celebrate raising the minimum wage and making sure that everybody willing to work hard will have a chance to raise their families right here in Washington, D.C. <laughs> We have created more than 20,000 jobs, and as our population grows, we know that everybody having a good education, affordable housing, and a good paying job is the only pathway to the middle class. Can an increase in the minimum wage help millennials become more financially independent? Panel, what are your thoughts? Well, first of all, um, I'm the definition of non um, financially independent. Um, but I, I do agree. Um, like, you know, being able to make uh, what you feel like you earned um, will really help millennials with not only financial, like, you know, independence, but like be confident in themselves. You know, mm -hmm. I went out and I worked for this, you know, big amount of money. Let me go and do that again. And I think now, because it's not there yet, um, they just look at the check and they're just so depressed and so sad about it. They don't even want to go to work the next day. So I feel like if you increase that, it'll give them confidence and more money as well. I think increasing the minimum wage is an absolute plus, plus, plus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in today's time, yeah. turn up. that's what most people can only turn to is sometimes the minimum wage job. Mm -hmm. And is it their fault? That varies depending on that person, but sometimes a lot of us are just nagging jobs because at that time, we just need that coin. So um, increasing jobs such as that that a lot of people only have to turn to is the best thing you could have ever done because they have responsibilities and things of that sort too, just like the person that's working for the government. Mm -hmm. So I think that's honorable that I mean, DC is finally doing that. I think it's hard enough just trying to get a job these days. Mm -hmm. So Most for definitely. you to raise the minimum wage, you know, for those who are employed does right. numbers. I mean, I think this is something that should definitely be spread um, to other states in the country because you can't make it off $9. Yeah. That's hard. And in, in, in today's time, adults, millennials, we have, a lot of us have kids to take care of. But you didn't go to college to get that the degree that certain jobs ask for. Mm -hmm. So you can only work maybe at McDonald's and on the side, on the Saturday or Sunday, you got to work at AHOP and these waitressing <laughs> jobs and things of that sort. So, I mean... I never understood how people expect, well, I know mothers have done it, expected, expected people to really just live off of that eight fifty or that $9. But then that's where the hustle comes in. And one thing about millennials and our parents, we know how to hustle. That's exactly. in our blood to try to survive by any means necessary. And I think with millennials, we're, they call us job hoppers these days anyway. So it's like for us <laughs> to be getting funny. a quick 15 over here and then turn around and get what you can get over there, I think it's definitely nothing mm -hmm. wrong with it. Yeah, and I think that increasing minimum wage will, will like make the path for an actual like middle class. A working class Exactly, person. because growing up, there was no middle class. And even now, there still isn't a middle class mm -hmm. until minimum wage is raised because, like, you have these people who went to college degree and all this other great stuff, but they're considered upper class because they have all these other things. But then you go down to the person who may have graduated high school, did mm -hmm. that, but they're, the only basic job they can get is, like, making eight, nine dollars an hour. Where does that leave the middle class? Right. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like, it's kind of either just above poverty or upper class. And with this new um, minimum wage increase, you're actually giving people a chance to actually live. To make and, you know, And I feel like it'll, it'll bring crime down because, I mean, one of the hustles that a lot of people turn to, 
you know, Stealing. illegal activities. Exactly. And if you give them an opportunity or you give them that chance, they won't have to turn to that right. type of stuff. You know, a lot of times that's, you know, the last very option. And they might not want to do it, but, you know, they end up doing it, mm -hmm. then they get a record, and then their whole life is tarnished. So if we make way for that middle class, I mean, I feel like the crime will go down and a lot of things will change for people. Yeah. But Brittany, what do you think about that extra dollar as far as being financially independent, like caring for yourself? Do you think that extra five dollars an hour really can put you in a place to that take care of yourself? Five dollars to hey. some people is right on time. That's a whole because bill. by the time you've worked, and that's like you were saying, some people we never wanted to work those minimum job, mm -hmm. minimum wage jobs for various reasons. I know for me, but for me, I've also worked at McDonald's. I was working at McDonald's making that $8 an hour, mm -hmm. but by the time taxes came out of that, yeah, it's like, it's like what is you that? had what is me exactly. cooking fries, mopping floors, wiping down this, and doing yeah, whatever yeah. you said do for only this amount of money. Yeah. So that five extra $5 is perfect. Wow. We can go on and on about this topic, but we have to take a quick break. We'll be right back. back to I Wish You Knew. You know, millennials are no stranger to the grind. Outside of a nine to five, it's common for us to have some type of side hustle. A side hustle is not just a job or things we do to make extra money, but it's also a chance to chase our dreams and fulfill our passions. So Byron, what's your side hustle? <laughs> mm -hmm, Byron, uh, listen, what you got going on? <laughs> we can go on and on and on about my side hustle specifically, but let me paint a picture for you. If you look up the definition of side hustle in the dictionary, I promise you, you would see my face because I do everything. Like literally, I can, I can draw you a picture, create a graphic for you, produce a song for you, and put up drywall. That's just, okay. I mean, it's, it's just skills. But I mean, I do Uber awesome and, and right. Lyft, and um, I produce music, and I'm starting a label now. Um, I'm doing a whole bunch of things. So I mean, it's not none of them have quite taken off yet. But I mean, I found myself having to do those things because my normal job doesn't pay that mm -hmm. much. You know, this extra Lyft check that mm -hmm. I got, you know ensures that I'm not broke the next week. Right. And, you know, with a, with a regular job, it's like, boom, taxes, boom this, boom bills. Two and weeks, like, two weeks, two weeks, Like two negative weeks. 300, sir. Oh but God. that extra lift check that I got, that was like 500, it's like, okay, you know, at least I got an extra $200, you know, do this and that. So oh I, 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 I could hustle, all, I hustle after this. So yeah, that's another. So for me, I'm one of the dreamers um, as a millennial. I'm, I have dreams of being an actress and doing things of that sort. So for me, my side hustles are those jobs that adults would consider like, yeah, something that you really need to be paying attention uh -huh. to. Yeah. That take I work, what you can yeah, get. Yeah, this is the, uh -huh. oh, that's a nice office. You should stay up in there. <laughs> yeah. But for me, I'm like, nah, I give it to December, then I gotta go. Yeah, my mom um, get that. The side hustles for me are those, I work temp jobs. So those temp jobs, when I can come in there for a day or two, mm -hmm. make my coin, mm -hmm. bye y'all, it's nice meeting y'all, right. then I'm on to the next thing. But as a dreamer, you really have to commit all of your time and all of your funds Jeez, to doing the exactly. craft that you want to exactly. do. From, in my perspective, acting is expensive, is expensive. Headshots, classes, yeah. workshops, Perfecting. this and that. So yeah. whatever I get, I'm in my mind, I'm, I'm sacrificing investing now, in I'm investing now, and then by the time I hit 30, it's going to be all worth it. Exactly. So and For that, me, when I graduated, I'm sorry to interrupt you. you. When I graduated, it was either get take what I can get now or have multiple part-time jobs. So that's what I tried to do. Mm -hmm. I tried to have a bunch of hustles, which were my part-time jobs. Then I ended up going full-time. I saw that didn't work for me. So I'm thinking about picking something up like real estate, where I can still work for myself, still do what mm -hmm. I want as far as chasing the dream exactly. and make some part-time exactly. money if I want to. <laughs> so I think the idea of side hustle for a millennial is just getting it where you can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, staying true to your dreams because when it, I, I find if I give myself eight hours to someone else's company or dream I'm really taking from I'm myself every day. Much. I'm robbing yeah. myself of eight hours. I yeah. could be doing you know something uh, that I love yeah, and even, that I like. And even for me, like fresh out of high school, I held a job, like the same job for two years. And I mean, I still lived at home, mm -hmm. but I was still chasing my dream. You know, I met some people at that job who could push me forward in this way, in this way, in that way. So, um, I mean, I'm not as, amb mm -hmm. as ambitious as all those temp jobs because, <laughs> you know, people would, you know, get to know me. I'm like, no, don't leave. But um, 
I, I held those jobs down and I networked within those jobs. And then when it was time to move, it was time to move. But I always chased my dream within mm -hmm. those jobs. I always found time. Like I, it was uh, like a year. I didn't get as much sleep. But it was just because I was always calling and talking and, and networking with people and always perfecting my own personal craft. Which as now, I'm in a position to you know make a little bit extra money, but I can still fund my other dream, That's which is this idea. actual production company, which is this music label. So hopefully within a few years, like I'm. In a few years, hopefully, you know, I can just quit all of my jobs and be like, look, I'm going to just focus on this. That mm -hmm. way I'm focusing on the business aspect, get my bills paid, and speaking, doing my dreams. Speaking of what we too. just talking Young about. Young lying on the, on the we floor. We were just But yeah. I think, lying. too, side hustling gets tricky for millennials. Why? Because... One, it distracts us from our real dreams. Exactly. Like for me, I'm stern. <laughs> I hear all the time in the temp offices, um, like sure. sometimes old ladies and stuff will tell you, make sure you keep chasing your dream. I've been here for 30 years yeah. and I oh. wish I did this. Yeah. Look, I wish you knew. But it's like they wish they would have done the things that I come in there saying that I'm that that's exactly. what I'm doing yeah. with my life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even with sign hustling, like some whip girls become hairdressers. You got guys that do haircuts. They take that to college, mm -hmm. they make their college money, and they still run with it. But sometimes you just get so comfortable with doing hair yeah, and, and you doing things, haircuts, yeah. and you just get stuck. And it's like, well, I guess this is okay. Mm -hmm. I'll make this comfortable for me, but you still have a burning desire to do mm -hmm. something else. Right. So exactly. I would say with side hustles, it varies on your real ambition and desire to really do what you want to do. Because it can get cloudy, but you have to make sure you going to come out of there and really be the person that you want to be at the end of it all. Yeah. And I really think it's about taking the risks exactly. while we're still young. Mm, yeah. Like, I can, I've quit my jobs because I want to chase the dream. And I'm young enough to do that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I, I really feel like we got to just stay yeah, focused. I'm, I'm about to quit my job because they don't oh understand the dream. You don't want this life. To you don't want this I'm a, life. I'm going I'm to I'm quote a quick lyric. I'm going to challenge the viewers at home. Don't you ever get too comfortable with anything that you don't want to do. Because mm -hmm. when you get too comfortable, you get stuck. Like, my mom, She's, you know, got a master's degree and she's an mm -hmm. RN and all that other stuff. She got pictures up in her office and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Cool. Be comfortable here. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you're a nurse and that's what you want to do. But if me specifically, with all the, the gifts and talents that I have, if I go to an office, I'm not putting nothing up. Because I plan to leave. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I plan to, right. you know, pursue my dream and then maybe I'll have like a corner office with nice glass mm -hmm. and all that other stuff. So I'm never too comfortable at one specific job. I always have others lined up so that when I do quit or if I do want to leave and do something else, I have the means to do that. Well, we have to take a break, but don't go away. We have some helpful hints on saving money and what's the word when we come back. Be sure to tweet us your thoughts using the hashtag iGrind. Welcome back. According to a recent study in Business Insider, millennials spend the most money on Uber, buying technology, and makeup products. And other things like Chipotle and concert tickets can also have our pockets tight. Mm -hmm. But that's cool because we have a few tips to help us enjoy our favorite things while balling on a budget. Well, I guess I'll start because I feel older, um, but I'm probably not the oldest one up here. <laughs> but uh, I'm a dad, so one of the things that you... Um, that you really need to do that my dad kind of pushes me to do is take care of your bills first. And I know a lot of people, like they think they do, but take care of your bills that you see and take care of your bills that you don't see. Because those bills mm -hmm. that you see are what, mm -hmm. rent and water and all oh, this other stuff. You. The bills that you don't see, which is I'm guilty of, is traffic tickets and all this other stuff that you-, health. you Exactly. Uh, and health insurance and all that other stuff that you, you don't really remember mm -hmm. or you don't see. Like jot it down, write it down. So that when you do get your check, yeah, you spend all your money on bills, but you still have a place to live, your car is still running, you know, mm -hmm. you're still in good health. So take care of those minute things first. And then once you do your side hustle, that's your extra money. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's your extra money to go to see Beyonce that's and that's queen. your exactly. You know, take a somebody out, just do whatever. So take care of your responsibilities. I mean, first. I think it's it's always healthy to have a good idea of what it costs to be you. Mm -hmm. You sure. know, what does Quote it cost that. to have fun in that. my life at this Quote age? You know, what are my bills? <laughs> um, and like you said, the 
extra money you can save, I like to also hide money from myself. I know you're probably thinking, how do you do that, mm -hmm. being yeah, that yeah. you probably know exactly I've, where you I've, put I've it. It's about disciplining yourself. Exactly. Um, I find I've been doing that for years. And when I say when your parents used to give you that twenty dollars, I used to be ten dollars to the to the savings, ten dollars to the savings every time. And, and when you do need it, or when you do want to treat yourself to a mm -hmm. vacation or something like that, the money is there. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I would say for me, I do hide money from myself, okay, but right. I find myself getting upset because sometimes I really have forgotten it and <laughs> exactly. I find like a like, wad uh. of cash just somewhere <laughs> and I'm just like, <gasps> but then it came at the perfect time because I, yeah. I was looking for yeah. something. Three Gs under your bed. But I would say um, really learn uh, to take responsibility for your adulthood. Exactly. It's about what you want out of it. Mm -hmm. I know that Beyonce ticket cost so much. <laughs> it was all, it was like $400 just for one ticket yeah. and I wanted to go. Yeah. But then I was like, Beyonce would be fine. But what about little Britney that's sitting over here in D.C. <laughs> exactly. that exactly. has some other exactly. things to do? I do believe in living in the moment, vacationing, right. going to Miami, going to the Essence Con, doing things like living. that. Living, yes. <laughs> I, I, I love to live because I don't get my youth back. I don't get these years back. Seriously. I'm supposed to have fun now before, like you said, kids, in my picture, before kids come down the road and different things of that sort. But for right now, it is time for me to get myself financially mm -hmm. comfortable. And I've become, well, I've started to understand how Brittany likes to spend money. <laughs> I've accepted it. I do like to yeah. spend money. I so I, I really money. do have to store some money away. Mm -hmm. And I'll say even to an extent, Ma, put this in your other mm -hmm. account mm -hmm. and just hold it for me. Because yeah. I get tempted. It is tempting to spend money and have fun. But when you have other dreams and you have other goals, yeah. right. For me, sometimes it overshadows, but everybody have, has to want to fight for their dreams right. with the same desire to spin and just live in that moment, and then it's all gone. And I so, think it's a shift okay. in I think it's a shift in perspective. I'm let you go. Yeah. Um, it's like you got to look at it differently. Like when I first mm -hmm. became an adult, I was still kind of shocked that I was an adult. Right. I was like, Seriously. well, I can go here, <laughs> I can get in the club, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? I can go by this, uh -huh. I can go by that. But it's kind of like you got to look at it. Like we have all these dreams and we have all these aspirations, but you got look at like your younger years like look at your like I want to say what age can you get a job now like 17 Two, 16? 16 I would start yeah. working at 14 yeah if you well, have the permit look at those work. early years as kind of like your building block to your like life castle or whatever mm -hmm. like in the beginning like you're you're going to work long hours you're going to have to hustle blah 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 and you're going to have to cut some things short but still find those find those golden bricks find those times to go buy those Beyonce tickets or find find when, whenever you're able to just don't mm -hmm. do it just because it's there like whenever you're able to like artists will always have concerts concerts will always always be around as long as there are people so if you can't afford it right. then and you can't afford it then then do it then because you know that that could have been something totally and different and to add to that trying to live on your friends budget cuz certain <laughs> friends have certain other friends, things or they yeah, get money yeah. you know y'all uh -huh. money states and status is mm -hmm. two completely different things totally but you different. up here trying to stay on her or his her level, level. Mm -hmm. and you making yourself yeah. crumble so get out of that too get comfortable yeah. enough with yourself to understand your life with what your you struggle and you, what's what you real for and you what, and what you need like overall because I mean you can only live for you like when you wake up in the morning mm -hmm. you wake up as you you don't wake up as this other person you don't mm -hmm. wake up as your parents because they've already done it this person's already done it you got to figure out what like what, like what you said you gotta you gotta understand <laughs> how uh, much does it cost like, to how be much you? does it cost to be me like <laughs> can I do this by myself or do I need to pay do I really need to pay somebody for this like mm -hmm. all the stuff I did to my car up mm -hmm. until this point I did myself I didn't pay somebody to do that I figured out how to do it and I did it myself and I mean it's YouTube and a whole bunch of other stuff to do it yourself like do a lot of stuff yourself that would be mm -hmm. like key um, figure out what you need and what you don't need like what 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 I mean by what you need is no you don't need Chipotle it's food is everywhere you know what I'm saying you <laughs> You don't need to go here. You don't need to go there. Just figure out what works for you um, and whatever makes you happy. You can get that when you can get it because it's the difference between being able to afford something and being able to pay for something. To right. Two totally different things. A lot of people, they don't understand that. They just buy it because they have the money, but then later down the road, they can't afford it because then you broke and you're living in a box. So uh <laughs> <laughs> that's sad. Well, that's all the time we have today. We'd like to thank all of you at home for watching, and we'll catch you next time on I Wish You Knew. But before we go, Byron, what's the word? Glad you asked. Abolitionist Harriet Tubman will replace Andrew Jackson on the $20 bill in 2020 in honor of the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage.